Hello, I'm Joe Follinsby. I'm the author of a new fantasy series, The Future History of the Grail. I'd like to read to you the first 1,000 words from Return to the Green Land, book three of the series. The first book is titled Fall of the Green Land, and the second book is titled War for the Green Land. The books are set on Earth a thousand years in the future when a dozen giant machines keep climate change in check. However, one of the machines is failing, and a knight must find the lost grail to repair it. I've based the books on the King Arthur legends. The main characters are Sir Percival and his sister Dee. Book three starts with a new journey to find the grail. I hope you enjoy this excerpt. Return to the Green Land by J.G. Follinsby Read by the author Chapter 1. The Weeping Way Sir Percival Rathkeel steadied himself for another gamble. He weighed the odds of victory or defeat as he and his friends approached Camelot's western gate. For the third time he was leaving the city on a journey with a greater chance of failure than success. He didn't know if he or his companions would return. If he returned empty-handed, his country would pass away. This was the final roll of the dice. The footfalls of his horse echoed in the half-empty streets. Early morning sparrows flitted among piles of stone and broken lumber remaining from the Lucian occupation. He glanced over his shoulder, brushing away strands of his flaming red hair. Trailing him were retainers on horses, leading pack animals, heavy with supplies. Percival expected the expedition to take months. "'What's troubling you, Percival?' Sir Galahad du Lac Corbenic rode beside him on a dapple gray destrier. Galahad's trademark white cloak flowed over the horse's rump. Have you forgotten something? I miss my sister, D. Percival's twin sister was back at the palace, probably working in the great audience hall, the place where King Arturus received important visitors and conducted public ceremonies. The king had asked D, short for Dindrain, to accompany Percival on the journey to Casanti, a port city deep in the hot lands. At first she agreed, but a day later she asked him to come to the Dark Unicorn, a pub popular with students at Camelot University. "'I'm not going with you, Purse,' she said this without meeting her brother's eye. "'Why not, Dee? I need you. How am I supposed to find the Grail without you?' "'You can easily find the Grail without me. Galahad knows almost as much about the Grail as Merlin. He found the False Grail.' Maybe it was useless, but he found it. D, I've been on two grailed quests, one to the eastern deserts, one to Coda. Both failed. I think things would have gone better if you were with me. If I don't succeed this time, that's ridiculous. I'm no expert on the grail or the great machine. When we came to Camelot, you went to university, I went to the keep. Until then, we did everything together at home on Mother's property. We helped each other with chores, with homework. We'd comfort each other during storms. We even, well, killed our father together. Dee winced at the memory. I did it to save you and me. I'm not proud of it. How do you know I won't need you to save me again? You saved me at the Battle of the River's Bend. I'd say we're even. Family doesn't work like that. No one's keeping a tally. Dee shifted in her seat. The truth is, Purse, I want to stay in Camelot to finish my mural in the great audience hall. That's my grail, the thing I want to achieve. At first it was just a job Mordred gave me, but now it's taken on a life of its own. I belong in front of a light tapestry telling stories with lasers and mirrors, not getting saddle sores a thousand kilometers from anywhere. That ended the conversation. Percival was so angry and upset that he didn't speak to Dee for days. She never reached out to him. Maybe she was just as angry. 
Arturus could not order D to accompany Percival. Instead, the king asked Galahad to join the expedition. I know I'm a poor substitute for your sister, Percival, Galahad said on the street near the western gate. Behind Galahad on a strong pony rode eleven-year-old Penny Corbinick, though no one knew her true surname. Galahad found her wandering the streets of Perditon as he and Lancelot traced a grail rumor. Now she was his page. Percival shook his head at Galahad, whom he'd got to know on the grail quest to Coda. Galahad had a bright scar in his neck from the Battle of River's Bend. No, my friend, I'm glad you're here, and Penny as well. Percival waved and grinned at Penny, a pretty girl whom Galahad praised as clever and quick. She returned the smile with her own, the kind that had street knowledge behind it. In Perditon, Penny sold bulbs of water and fresh batteries to travelers while avoiding enforcers in the corrupt city government. As a condition for joining the expedition, Galahad insisted Penny go along, but Percival thought she might attract trouble. Though he had a plan for reaching Cassanti, no one knew the hazards of the journey in detail. No Viridian had been to the city in hundreds of years. The roads might be infested with bandits, trolls, or herds of basilisks, for all Percival knew. Penny might get hurt. She was also a liability. She would be an easy target for kidnappers or slavers reportedly operating between the border and Aurelia, the first major city on the peaceful sea south of Camelot. Percival planned to stop there before heading to Cassanti further on. On the streets of Camelot, a few people watched Percival's party, unimpressed. When his first expedition left for the desert nearly two years in the past, hundreds cheered or waved handkerchiefs to wish him good luck. Now they appeared sullen and resentful. Dozens queued up on a breadline. Schools were refugee centers. Tents hugged houses and apartment buildings broken by the war. On the news chans and comm boards, people argued that the money spent on the expedition was better spent on housing refugees and rebuilding Camelot. The Lucians had destroyed grain silos and burned crops, but the failing climate had also hurt harvests. Maybe Merlin could find another solution to the climate problem. Percival sympathized with those demanding help, but he disagreed with them. Yes, all of the Grail expeditions so far had failed in one way or another, but Camelot's knights had to follow any hint of a working Grail to fix the great machine. That was the best way out of the crisis. Thanks for listening to the first 1,000 words of Return to the Green Land, book three of my fantasy series, The Future History of the Grail. Look for the Amazon links in the video caption for more information and to purchase the books. You can listen to me read excerpts from the other two books in this video series as well. Please let me know what you think, and please like, subscribe, and share this video. See you next time.